Does Eli Drinkwitz talk too much? Well, one of my listeners certainly seems to think so. And also, it's been somewhat accepted that the Missouri defense improved a lot last season. Let's actually dive a little bit deeper into that to see if that's true. Coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And it is August 1st, and you know what that means. It is time for Missouri football practice to begin, and Locked on Mizzou is now five days a week. So I'm really excited about those two facts, and I'd also like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash College. Terms and conditions apply. Now, to lead off the show here, I want to talk about Eli Drinkwitz and his mouth, his rather sizable mouth at times. Of course, we all remember last season in 2021, SEC Media Days. Well, Eli Drinkwitz was definitely swinging his big old tiger tail all around the press rooms, no doubt about that. And certainly we know, we remember the Darth Vader moment with Dan Mullen, and that caused, well, his father, at least according to Eli Drinkwitz, to tell him, hey, maybe turn down the talk just a little bit until you start winning more football games. Well, that had seemed to be the case for a while up until at least recently when Eli Drinkwitz took out the old flamethrower to Jeremy Pruitt and his Tennessee program that, well, frankly, had a lot of NCAA violations thrown its way in the recent weeks here. And, well, this actually led to longtime listener Jim, who, and a longtime frequent emailer, I should say, as well. And Jim is, well, a little bit concerned that, yeah, Eli needs to step back and maybe start to win a few more games first. Now, I did follow up on this email that was entitled, in all caps, talk me off the ledge. So, yes, Jim is very concerned I did follow up by asking, hey, quick question. Did it bother you when Norm Stewart was lobbing grenades at Billy Tubbs, Johnny Orr, Danny Knee, and basically the entire Big 8 conference? Because I'll just speak for myself here and say that I loved it. I found Norm Stewart to be incredibly entertaining off the court, on the court, the whole bit, his basketball camp. And frankly, you know, the Billy Tubbs stuff, it felt like Norm and Billy Tubbs were kind of in on the joke a little bit together and were actually a little bit friendly. Now, Johnny Orr, on the other hand, it seemed like, well, there was some real animosity there. So I would say I don't believe whatsoever that that hurt Norm Stewart at all. And in fact, I would say that a lot of Missouri fans, in fact, love Norm Stewart for his brutal country honesty, if you will, if that's the way you want to look at it. But to be fair, so so what we're really saying here, Jim emailed me back and said, you know what, that's true, but Norm Stewart won. So let's be clear about what we're really talking about here. We want Eli Drinkwitz to win more. We're not really worried about how much he talks. We're worried about how he wins. So let's just be let's just make that really clear. But I do think it's fair to ask maybe a more important question regarding this topic, and that is simply to what end? All this jousting verbally within the media, yelling at other SEC coaches, either current or former, perhaps throwing shade at, you know, a Tennessee program, which just frankly embarrassed you at Faroe Field last year. Well, the real, again, to what end? Does this help Eli Drinkwitz and Missouri in some way? Because here's the thing. I do have to admit that while certainly compared to 2021 and 2022, much lower expectations for Missouri nationally. Because, well, I think Missouri exceeded most national expectations during Eli's annual 
or his first his first annual season, his inaugural season, I guess I should say, as a Missouri coach in 2020. But you know what? After last year's disappointment, it seems like Eli just does not want to be out of the headlines. So on one hand, you could say, well, it seems like he's kind of creating some pressure on himself this season that's maybe unnecessary. Fair, That's a fair point, but then you also have to look at it another way. Why would he be doing this? Why is he still putting out social media videos of him and his staff at the Lake of the Ozarks throwing drinks up in the air in, in, the, in an outdoor restaurant, for instance, after getting Joshua Manning in his recruitment? Well, I actually think that's it. There's your answer. Whether Eli Drinkwitz is right or wrong, I think this is the logic. He thinks, hey, this is part of my appeal. This is part of my recruiting momentum that I would like to keep going, as it seems to have maybe slightly dissipated, at least in twenty the 2023 class so far. I'm sure Eli wants to keep that momentum going and just keep the eyeballs on his program. I don't think he likes the idea that Missouri is flying under the radar nationally. So if what he has to do is make fun of Jeremy Pruitt and his bag wife a little bit, his wife who allegedly was dropping off money to Tennessee recruits, well, you know what? I could see worse things. It'd be one thing if if Eli Drinkwitz was taking aim at Josh Heupel, because really he should have nothing to say at Josh Heupel right now. Heupel obviously pulled his pants down last season in Columbia, so there's no reason to be saying anything to him. But I will say, Jeremy Pruitt, that guy deserves to be made fun of. So that target alone, I think I'm okay with. But the bottom line is to Jim and Eli Drinkwitz's dad and anybody else who's out there about Eli running his mouth and swinging that tiger tail all over the room, well, I think it's okay. I really do because ultimately, I don't think it has that much of an effect on wins and losses. And as, as listener Jim said, hey, it's all about the wins, right? As long as he wins, everything will take care of itself. So to me, let's not overanalyze this too much and just take it for what it is. Sort of like in the Norm Stewart era, you wouldn't necessarily take everything Norm Stewart said seriously in the media. So maybe let's take a little bit of what Eli says in the media with a grain of salt too. Clearly the guy likes the sound of his own voice and likes to entertain as well. Maybe that's a good thing for recruiting. And coming up, speaking of the Tennessee Volunteers, well, last season 62 to 24 shellacking in Memorial Stadium was certainly the low point of the defense last season. But you know what? The conventional wisdom has become that Missouri really figured some stuff out in the second half of the year. But you know what? I don't want to just take conventional wisdom on its face. Let's actually dive more deeply into this particular meme and figure out if it's actually true. But first, I want to tell you about our title sponsor, and that is LinkedIn Jobs. And you know what? As you gear up for the fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. And I can tell you that is absolutely true from my own experience. So guess what? LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier for you to find the right people you want to talk to and faster and even better for free. So create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn jobs help you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn dot com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply so once again it's become somewhat accepted conventional wisdom that the tigers were significantly improved defensively in 2021 but really are we just damning them with faint faint praise just a tiny bit because the first half of the season for the Tigers, well, they were simply historically bad. That might have been quite literally the worst 
Missouri defense of my lifetime. And I've seen some really bad Missouri defenses in my nearly 40 years on this planet. But at the same time, yes, you have to admit that, well, the Tigers performed better than that in the second half of the season. But just how well did they perform in that second half? That's really my question. So first of all, if you're going to say the second half of the season, I've got to assume you're beginning with the Vanderbilt game because, well, as we mentioned, the 62-24 debacle against Tennessee was followed up by a less than inspiring defensive effort against in a win against North Texas 48-35. And then, frankly, another home game against A&M, 35-14, that game was not even as close as the final score indicated. The Aggies completely, completely dominated, especially the Missouri defense. But the Tigers did get their second road win of the Eli Drinkwitz era the following week at Vanderbilt. Defense gives up 28 points to a Vanderbilt team, at least according to footballoutsiders.com and their advanced statistics was the 96th best offense in the country. That's out of 130 teams. That's not very good. Well, believe it or not, the very next week, South Carolina, they were actually worse than that. They were the 99th best offense in the country. So again, Tigers give up how many points? Let's see, 28 points to South Carolina. Excuse me, I did skip over the Georgia game, but the point here is South Carolina – Defense gives up 28 points to, again, another really, really bad offense. Now, the Georgia game, eh, maybe we can just set that one aside. I skipped over it there for a second, probably for good reason, because the Bulldogs just on a whole different planet, not only than the Tigers, but the rest of the SEC East last season. Then you've got Florida, obviously an incredible, an incredibly memorable game. Tigers pull it out. The last second two-point conversion is good from Basilak to Daniel Parker Jr., two guys who have since transferred. Welcome to college football in 2022. But again, Florida, you look at the numbers there, they're the 58th best offense in the country. Considering where they were late in the season there, Dan Mullen was basically a dead man walking. You had Emory Jones, the backup quarterback, really just was very limited with his passing ability. Missouri put eight guys in the box, dared Florida to throw the entire game. Good defensive game plan. It worked, but at the same time, I don't know how sustainable that is against, you know, actual teams that can throw the football. Then last week against Arkansas, another pretty good domination by the by the Razorbacks. And finally, really the low key, the best performance by the Tigers defensively in the second half was in the bowl game. Army is a tough opponent to play, even if you do have a month to play for them. It's almost impossible to replicate their offense in practice and the numbers showed army was the 27th best offense in the country last year and really missouri should have won that football game if they just could have scored a touchdown in the second half they'd have had it so i'm much more likely to blame the offense there but to recap here sure did missouri play better defense in the second half of the season starting with the vanderbilt game well yeah they did better yes Did they play good defense? No, not at all. They were simply better than what they were when they were historically, historically bad. Again, probably the worst Missouri defense, at least statistically, of my lifetime. Even in a close game against Boston College up in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, overtime loss, Missouri's defense, I mean, Boston College, with their backup quarterback, did absolutely whatever it wanted on the ground, just out physically the Tigers over and over again. So to me, especially in that run game, Missouri's got to find a way to be better at the point of attack, whether it's playing more big bodies on the inside. Some way or another, the Tigers, while I don't think they totally lacked athleticism a lot on that front seven, maybe Blaze Aldridge is another question there. I don't know that he was an SEC caliber linebacker, but I think there are certain guys, especially on that D-line, who are athletic enough to compete, but just in terms of pure size and having 300-pound defensive linemen, which Missouri lacked last year, the rest of the SEC has 320-pound offensive linemen for the most part, it just seemed like Missouri really lacked the beef 
up front last year. And really, that's one question I still have about this defense. Where is the size up front? How are we not going to just get pushed off the line of scrimmage again? That's a real question mark that I have for this team and this defense heading into 2022. And coming up, I want to talk more about the Missouri running back room and also, well, a running back for the 2023 class that Eli Drinkwitz has secured a commitment from. But first, I want to tell you about betonline.net and an NFL division futures bet that I'm really interested in. Well, first, betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs, find all your favorite sports, including Major League Baseball, the NBA, college, combat sports, and of course the NFL as well. And again, to me, the most interesting futures bet that I see right now is a division odds. Give me the Pittsburgh Steelers to win the AFC North at 11 to 1. Because 11 to 1, that is a really, really, really long odds for any team, especially one of the great franchises in sports, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Not only, of course, did they have their runs decades ago with massive championships, who's been more consistent than the Steelers other than, say, the New England Patriots over the last 10, 20 years or so? Well, here's the deal. The Steelers got horrible quarterback play from the now-retired Ben Roethlisberger last year. If they can just get average quarterback play, I mean, come on. You got the Browns, the Deshaun Watson problems. You got the Ravens. They have their own set of questions. The Bengals, surprisingly, have the third best odds in that division. It's just over 2-1. to one. But to me, you want to go a long shot, go with the Steelers. But again, no matter what you're into, you got to check it out. Head to betonline.net today. That's BetOnline, where the game starts. Before I get to the 2022, this season's running back room, let's talk about next year's class, Jamal Roberts, who's listed as an athlete by Rivals.com, although I'm pretty sure that Missouri does want him to play running back, at least as of today. Offers a really nice combination of size for the position, Six feet, 200 pounds, also has pretty good speed as well. Notably, though, only his probably his most major offers were Kansas State and Arizona State. So considering the high bar that Eli Drinkwitz has set the last couple years, perhaps some fans were maybe a little bit disappointed by the lack of stars and, and flashy offers from Jamal from Jamal Roberts. But again, you look a little more deeply into it. He's a really intriguing prospect. At that size, with his speed that he's shown at the high school level, you know, St. Mary's is not the highest level of high school football, so maybe that's a question there as well. But I think he's an intriguing guy, especially when you look even more deeply into his offer list. You've got some service academies after him too. The the previously mentioned Army, Black Knights, and Air Force offer Jamal Roberts as well and you know you know what that tells me well the kid probably has a little bit of work ethic some academic achievement to him so not everybody can just go to army and air force let's put it that way so to me Jamal Roberts an interesting guy I can't say how much I love this recruitment because frankly I don't follow nationally all the running backs in high school football you'll have to forgive me there but certainly not going to be dismissive of this young man's recruitment whatsoever but you know what let's get to this season because that's what's really important right I mean this is the first day of practice so let's talk about that and one thing I think I've maybe assumed that I shouldn't have is that Eli Young more than likely would be one of the top two running backs on this roster I was kind of thinking Nathaniel Pete was maybe your your leader in the clubhouse to to be the number one guy but it seemed like Eli Young was the number two guy I think I assumed that because of the action he got in the Armed Forces Bowl last season. But the indications I'm getting, it sure is looking like just reading the quotes from from Curtis Looper and just other tea leaves, it sure looks like B.J. Harris is primed to maybe take a bigger piece of the running back pie than I originally thought. And, And Harris, you know, an intriguing player, an intriguing high school running back, from I believe the 2021 class, perhaps 2022, forgive me for not knowing that, off the top of my head, but Harris at, at worst is a redshirt freshman with plenty of time 
to to figure things out and and certainly to improve in the Missouri offense and everything like that. So no no concerns there whatsoever. I think Harris was considered every bit as intriguing of a prospect coming out of high school as Eli Young was. So really no, no real major note there other than just, hey, I wanted to pump the brakes on myself and realize that, oh yeah, this is a pretty wide open running back competition, especially once you get past really the first spot or two. I think Nathaniel Pete, I don't think he would have transferred from Stanford as as a senior here if he didn't think he was going to get some pretty good run but the rest of the carries perhaps Pete is the workhorse running back like Larry Roundtree and Tyler Beatty have been the last couple seasons but certainly I think all the carries behind those two got those those, that first guy is is going to be absolutely wide open and I did just check here yes BJ Harris was class of 2021 so there you go he will be – this will be his second year with the Tigers. So just wanted to clean that up really quick. But you know what? Thanks, as always, for joining me on today's podcast. We are five days a week. And tomorrow I'm going to come at you with the newest member of the Locked On Podcast Network. That's Jason Jordan. No, not Kurt Angle's son, Jason Jordan. But Jason Jordan, the basketball recruiting expert. Going to have a good time with him. And, of course, we're going to talk some football as well. So until then, I'm John Miller, and just quickly, get more on the SEC by making Locked On SEC your second listen today. Chris Gordy, the local experts of Locked On, take you across the Southeastern Conference in less than 30 minutes. Once again, that's Locked On SEC. So until next time, I'm John Miller, and this has been Locked On Mizzou.